Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, you join me after um, a day where I've been basically spending uh, a couple of hours mixing this piece and logic. Um, it's an orchestral piece again. We've got 360 tracks on the go. Another massive one. Don't know why I do it to myself, but here we are. Um, very similar kind of setup to how I always do my, my orchestral pieces um, with setup with uh, the four microphones for longs and shorts. We've got close tree, outrigger, ambient for each of the instruments. The instruments that I'm using here, Spitfire BBC um, SO Pro, um, some east-west percussion sounds. We've got um, Hans Zimmer percussion sounds as well. So this is kind of, I'd say, like 75% complete. Um, I need to have another listen to it tomorrow with fresh ears, which hopefully you know is, is a really important thing. Um, but um, what I'd like to do is, is kind of play it to you guys and just the process of playing it with a camera on, I'll hear things and I'll make some changes and, and talk you through my process. But here's, here's the piece for just now where, where we're at just now. So um, that's kind of where I'm at just now with this piece. Um, there's a few things that I just heard um, straight away there that, um, that I need to sort. So I think this opening horn melody doesn't quite isn't quite prominent enough. So I'm just gonna fling that up a couple of dB at this at this point here. Just automate it up a little bit. Still a little bit lost. Um, 
um, I think I might actually bring up the cello a little bit more just to kind of help that a little bit. So the cellos are, are covering it here as well. So I'll just put it up a tiny bit. Um, I think I need to EQ it a little bit differently as well. What you might notice um, here is that I've actually grouped my instruments together so that when I make one automation change on, for example, on cello longs, I'm going to make an automation change there, you'll notice that on cello shorts it actually changes as well. And this just really makes me keep, allows me to keep track of where things are, particularly when I'm crossing between um, different um, articulation types within the instruments. Um, this really keeps my workflow um, keeps my sanity for my workflow a little bit a little bit better. So yeah, I'll let's see. <laughs> The big problem with this is that I know the tune so well that I, I'm singing it in my head, and I, and that's such a such a thing that I need to stop doing, um, because I know how it should sound, and um, it's a real skill to try and remove yourself from uh, what you think you should be able to hear to what you actually are hearing, um, when you've been listening to something for such a long time, and that's why, um, listens, um at the beginning of days are so important because your ear doesn't really know what to expect. You've kind of forgotten things overnight. So um, when I have a listen to this tomorrow, I'll pick up other things, I'm sure. Um, I've done a kind of a new thing for me anyway um, with the, the reverbs here. So um, as, as it was playing, I showed you the kind of reverbs that, that I'm using. So um, we've got this Altiverb Todd AO um, reverb for scoring and then kind of complemented with this um, FabFilter Pro R, um, kind of blending the two uh, the two verbs together. But what I've done is I put every um, reverb into a VCA. Um, so all the strings, all the brass, all the percussion, all the woodwinds, all their verbs are um, VCA'd to this um, VCA here. And this means that I can really listen to, well, firstly, the reverb on its own, which is really important to check that it actually sounds decent and um, but also it means that I can actually subtly change the mix of the reverb and um, it means that actually I can decide that maybe it's a bit reverb heavy or if someone comes to me um, I mean this this is for for a sync license for for a sync um, uh, project and they might come to me and say Tom it's too wet can you bring it down or we need to make it wetter I can just very quickly fling this around so here's here's all the reverbs on it's on their own from I'll just go from from where the horns come in I'm sure you can see this is really useful to be able to hear this. And it means if we bring it all the way down. It means that we can bring it in and balance it properly. So maybe actually it sounds maybe slightly better with it um, 2 dB out. But this means that I can have absolute control over all the reverbs in one go. Um, so VCAs are a really useful thing to be able to do. Um, if any of you want to know how to set up a VCA, uh, drop me a comment and I'll, I'll do a wee video um, on how to use them. But they're, they're fairly straightforward, but extremely useful things to do. So um, the percussion I still need to sort out. So uh, the low percussion, um, we've got Hans Zimmer um, paper juns being used. I think they're coming about here. So um, here they are in isolation, and you'll notice that I've um, bounced down the separate microphones that you have in that, so the close, the room, and the surround, and I'm doing a mix of each of them. And probably tomorrow I'll actually do a little bit of EQ on each of them, but um, they're being it's being quite heavily EQ'd as it is just now. Uh, just taking out a lot of the resonance and kind of the stuff that really gets in the way. If I take this out, here that's kind of too powerful and that sits in the mix a bit better like that and then we've got a, a compressor on it and then what I'm doing is I'm actually taking a lot of the um, information out of the out of the stereo out of the left and right and just having it down the middle so that the bass is actually just quite focused in the center um, and that keeps it out of the way of things so that's kind of what I'm doing um, with the low percussion there there's a couple of things that I actually kind of want to get rid of um, on listening to it, and it's really annoying because bouncing all these down take absolutely forever, but 
Um, it's probably something that I have to do. Um, these trumpet motifs. The kind of repeated da -da 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 -da. I just don't think they're I don't think they add anything. If I actually take them out, this is without them now. I think that's a lot cleaner. Um, and also I think the, the sound just... I'm not convinced by the, by the sample completely as well and, and my mix probably isn't quite right as well but I, they're just annoying me at that part here. Um, yeah, with the strings, the, the mix, I've generally um, left the close mics out quite a lot because I want them to kind of feel like they're, they're not completely in your face and they're actually a little bit, a little bit more distant as it were. Um, so here's um, a kind of a schmaltzy string bit. I think that's round about here. And then a little bit earlier. So I think I'm quite happy with that string sound. You'll notice that I've automated things um, quite heavily in some places just to bring out certain moments. Um, so you might have noticed that little um, arpeggiated figure. Uh, that was quite an important um, moment that I just wanted to kind of bring out. So uh, I'm always kind of on this motorised fader and um, moving things around. Um, I'm quite happy with the piece. There's a few moments where actually it does lose energy. Necessary modulation here, um, which which I would change again, but it is what it is. It had to be three minutes long, and um, I could only fit so much in, and this is pretty much exactly three minutes, so it kind of fits the brief pretty well. Um, I think also here the trumpet's better. I think the woodwinds need to be louder as well. This is a, a thing where I've I've actually as I said, grouped the piccolo and flutes together. So when I make one automation change, all of them change, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so it's really good for kind of broad stroke um, automation. Um, in this style of music, where um, it's very much kind of safety in numbers, orchestration, they're all playing together, um, this, this, this technique kind of works quite well. <laughs> So yeah, I think that is sounding kind of all right for what it is. So this will get sent off for mastering um, probably tomorrow night um, once I've had another chance to listen to it. But the turnover of this, um, I started writing the piece. What day is it today? On Thursday. I started writing the piece on Tuesday, Tuesday night at the piano. Um, I orchestrated it all on Sibelius, um, you know, on Tuesday night pretty much. So the actual writing of the piece took maybe, maybe sort of, four four hours or so to, to do and then um, yesterday I kind of uh, spent a bit of time programming it and that's that's actually kind of the, the longest thing to do is to to input it into logic properly and then uh, today did a did the kind of mix on it um, I I mean as a composer it I really love mixing stuff um, I'm a bit of a geek with it to be honest and I think it's a it's a great skill for us composers to be able to to kind of do and I mean, I've picked up all this knowledge generally from using my ear and knowing what an orchestra sounds like and being quite adept with, with Logic Pro and stuff like that. Um, but maybe if you're a mix engineer, you can you can send me some criticisms. I'm always happy to to hear that sort of thing. So this has been a quite a garbled kind of uh, splurge of music. But um, thank you for listening. I think this helps me out loads to just be able to to show you what I'm writing and and um, to have a kind of a, a listening a listening post um, in this in the terms of you guys listening at home. Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Please let me know um, if you've got any questions or anything that you 
that you think I've kind of glossed over or haven't really addressed or have a question about or or want to ask me about I'm always really really happy to to hear from you and yeah I'm not sure what the next video will be but it will be very soon thank you so much for tuning in and see you next time